I know you've probably already seen this by now, but on the off chance you haven't, this will now be my go-to video every time I'm having a bad day. Japan, and I believe you have a filter turned on in the video settings. Uh, you might want to uh, uh, take, take We're a trying look. to, we're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, in the it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. That's not, I'm not a cat. I can, I can see that. I want to be friends with Cat Grandpa so bad. I just know he's a cinnamon roll. All right, back to reality though. According to the woke, Cracker Barrel is racist and they're mostly wrong, but not entirely. So I'm gonna lay out some receipts. Allegedly, Britney Spears did watch Framing Britney, her thoughts and what she's planning on doing about it. Mark Cuban says no more national anthem at Mavericks home games and big conservatee. Ivanka and President Trump are in a heated disagreement involving this conservative. Hope you're thirsty. The five orange juicy day. Hit the like button real quick. Let's roll, little potato. I'm Alex Clark and this is Papa Jigs. A viral tweet is fueling speculation that Cracker Barrel's logo and entire existence is racist. And we need to talk about this because I have some thoughts to say and some bombs to drop. The viral tweet in question says, Cracker was a slang term for whip. That's why blacks called whites crackers from the crack of the whip. A Cracker Barrel is a barrel that held whips for sale at the country store. You see the whip going from the R to the K? Racism in your face. Okay, now hold up, hold up. That, that was pretty funny, but let me just say something real quick. This origin story about Cracker Barrel is completely false. A Cracker Barrel held exactly what it says, crackers, and people would set a checkerboard on top and play games and sit on rocking chairs, exactly what the entire brand of Cracker Barrel is. I would love to sit and talk with my friends over an entire barrel of crackers. My biggest gripe while wine tasting is that they never give you enough crackers. Breads and cookies and crackers and pasta and pizza. And to say that that's a whip also with the R and the K is ridiculous. It's just a curvy stylized font. You know, everybody's personality is different. Everybody has their own kind of font. I, Times New Roman. It's classic, it's the traditional standard, it's assertive, it's professional. Amy, it's Comic Sans. It's cheerful, it's casual, nobody really takes it too seriously. However, I will say this, because I think it is important to tell the truth even when it makes us uncomfortable. The less allegations that Cracker Barrel has a racist past are not wrong. What? In 1994, the Justice Department settled a huge racial discrimination lawsuit against Cracker Barrel. The Justice Department's complaint alleged that Cracker Barrel violated Title II of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 by engaging in a pattern or practice of discrimination against African American customers and prospective customers on the basis of their race or color. Specifically, the complaint alleges that Cracker Barrel, and I'm gonna quote what this whole report says, allowed white white servers to refuse to wait on African-American customers, segregated customer seating by race, seated white customers before African-American customers who arrived earlier, provided inferior service to African-American customers after they were seated, and treated African-Americans who complained about the quality of Cracker Barrel's food or service less favorably than white customers who lodged similar complaints. The Justice Department had evidence that this was going on at approximately 50 different Cracker Barrel restaurants in seven Southern states. Obviously, Cracker Barrel got their act together because they wouldn't still be in operation today if they hadn't, but this is repulsive. Now, as long as your local store is treating all customers fairly and respectfully, I don't see anything wrong with eating there, and if they're not, report them. Oh, cracker on a cracker. Also, where's the justice report on Brad's wife? February 27th, 2017. A woman comes home to deliver her husband some bad news. She has been fired from her job at Cracker Barrel. They gave no notice. They gave no reason. The husband, Brad, embraces her. A tear rolls down her cheek. 
Brad's hands tighten into fists. Eleven years of service. Huge Britney news. According to Page Six, Britney Spears got super emotional after watching the Framing Britney documentary, <laughs> same. And a source says she's hopeful she will finally be freed from the vice-like grip of her father. And she's planning on making her own documentary about her life in her own voice with a top female director. Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. This source spilled a lot of tea, so let me just tell you what all they said because it is so juicy. Britney finally feels like there is a light at the end of a very long, dark tunnel. There are parts of the film that were too hard and emotional for her to watch. The scenes that describe the most difficult times of her life, the relentless media circus, and the harsh focus on her as a young mother. But she feels for the first time in many years that people are on her side and things will get better for her. Apparently, Britney is touched by all the love and support from her fans and other celebrities like Sarah Jessica Parker speaking out on her behalf, saying that her dad is out of control. The source also said her dad is drunk with power over Britney's life. She wants to work, she wants to make music and perform, but he is too controlling. He has her set up to fail. Britney hasn't had the proper help she needs to be able to control her own finances, to fully deal with her mental health issues, to be the mother she wants to be. Jamie won't let her have any freedom or responsibility over her own life. This summer, her father grounded her for three weeks because she dared to meet a friend for a socially distanced walk on the beach and a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. She's 39 years old. Who does that? I feel so bad for her and now feel really guilty for making fun of her dancing videos and burning down her gym. She's probably doing that weird stuff because he has her on so many antipsychotics that she doesn't need, you know? But what have we learned? Free Britney! Shark Tanker and Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban says his NBA team won't be playing the national anthem at any more of their games. It's all right, it's nonsense, Robert. It's all nonsense <laughs> across the board. Says a lot, doesn't it, that Mark's cool with doing business in communist China, but not okay with playing the American national anthem during his games. I hate it. I'm out. Wow. Since the NBA is so intent on screwing Hong Kong's freedom fighters and patriotic Americans, they should just play the Chinese anthem instead and call it a day. No, no, that's not own. what I asked. That's not what I asked. The grossest part of all is that this guy has been considering running for president. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Obama is launching a kid show on Netflix about healthy eating. I know y'all are probably expecting me to make fun of her for this, and actually, I think this is cute. I mean, whatever. If it stays literally about food only, I don't have an issue with this at all. I think she's cute with kids, and she has a good personality for this. Ow! 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 That said, the kids who have to eat the food might not like the show if the end result is anything like Michelle's school lunches that were a mix of cardboard and grass. Thanks, Obama. The one thing I will say is it does make me really sad just thinking about how she gets all these opportunities and the media loves her and Melania never will just because she's conservative. Melania could be like the fashionable version of Dora the Explorer. She speaks six languages and she also loves kids. It's an unfair liberal mob world and we're all just living in it until Elon Musk builds us a new planet. Now this is the plan. Get your ass to Mars. Just something super cool really quick. This absolute G of a college student made a Sprite commercial for fun on TikTok from her dorm room, and I literally cannot believe how cool this is. Sprite needs to hire her stat. I filmed a commercial in my college dorm. So since my dorm is quite small, I didn't have space to set up my backdrop stand, so I turned my desk into a makeshift set with two bed sheets. For this shot, I stuck a lemon slice on a paintbrush, spun it around, and masked it in with a Sprite and Post to make it fly out from behind the can. Here, I cut the can in half and poured water through it to make it seem like the camera was inside the can. Without further ado, here is the final commercial. Hit it, boys. It's literally producer Abigail. Like, producer Abigail could 100% do something like this. She has more talent in her pinky finger than I do in my whole body. A lot of people like this don't even realize it, but they don't even need to go to college. Like, if you have these skills, you are set for life, dude. Skip the debt. Because Joe Biden is going to make me pay for that, and you don't even need it. I got no education. Who needs it? Look at me. Look at me. 
I know you guys want more conservatee stories and gossip about our own peeps, so here is a good one. The Daily Mail came out with a story that Ivanka Trump is really urging her dad to cut all ties with controversial Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene because Ivanka is thinking about running for Florida Senate herself. And she's worried Jewish people will hold that against her since MTG has said some super anti-Semitic things in the past, plus a bunch of weird QAnon stuff. What do you think about that? Oh my God, it's so juicy. Yeah. Tomorrow, should I talk about lovey-dovey stuff or what? I can't believe Valentine's is already here. I love Valentine's Day so much pink. Poplitics comes out every weekday right here at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. And if you didn't tap the heart yet, please do that. Tell me what you think about Mark Cuban, Ivanka, and Brittany in the comments. Share this episode to your story in with one friend who hasn't watched us yet, and please hit the save button. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark. Clark, and this is Poplitics. Click below to watch yesterday's episode. Please subscribe, thumbs up, share this video, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss the conservatee. And make sure you're following this show at Poplitics on Instagram for even more conservative content.